whatever you wind up doing should be doing. And I have not behaved one single day of my life. Not one day of my life have I behaved, and I am fine. I need your help. I can't tell you what it is. You can never ask me about it later, and we're going to hurt some people. Who's Kyle we're going to thank you? Good morning, and thank you for joining us on the Nikki Maduro Show. We're going to talk about all sorts of things from the Supreme Court to that tragedy in Baltimore. And then, yes, Diddy is in some doo-doo. And apparently, this has been this has been news and rumors for a long time with this man. And I want to, yeah, we'll talk about, you know, spe- his specific case. But kind of this reckoning with people. I mean, not just Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby and R. Kelly. But just the constant people that are fed up with what I guess people used to turn a blind eye to. We were talking yesterday about that documentary about Nickelodeon, Quiet on the Set. And I think people are just really, rightfully so, not putting up with this crap anymore. Uh, I am Nikki Maduro. Kim McAllister is here. Good morning, my friend. How good are you? Good morning. I'm good. You know what I did yesterday? Mm. Janet R. Yes. From the Janet. chat. Yes. Whom you've met. Yes. Works in Petaluma once every so often. Okay. And she's like, hey, let's hang out. Nice. And I'm like, hey, I let's love it. That. <laughs> and so she had to hang she had to hang with me and Jacob. We had Aww. to bring him as well. But we had a little uh, a little sandwich last night and, and, and got to chit chat. So nice. It was really fun. I really enjoyed myself. Yeah. Where did you guys go? What sandwich we place? went to this, shout out? It was really centrally located and kid friendly. We went right. to this place called McNear's. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's like a, this a, kind of like deli kind of place. No, it's like a bar, but Ooh. a bar, like bar and grill kind of deal. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Nice, 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 yeah. nice. Um, I love meeting all of the people, Janet. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's Kay, uh, all of you guys. Mm-hmm. You guys really, really are the best, and we just love the fact that you guys support the show and reach out to all of us. I love. The community that we have formed here, Kim. I yeah, just really, too. really adore it. And we mm-hmm. want to keep it going. Oh, Reggie says it's a good choice, Janet. Very good choice. Um, okay, let's get some business out of the way. We'll get to all the, the headlines first. Click that thumbs up button. Please show your support for the show. The super chat is, of course, also live. We do have our Patreon, which is something that we really depend on and we want to grow. So become an official Medorable by going to the Nikki Maduro show.com. The Patreon link is there. And just to a reminder, I know I say it every time, but it's just a one time a month payment. It's not every day. It's not every week. It's just one time a month. So whatever you can afford to give myself and Kim, we appreciate it. And PayPal is awesome. So just go to paypal.com. You can hit the send button and put in the Nikki Maduro show at gmail.com. And we do have a show sponsor. I'm actually doing an interview with Auntie Tabby after this show. I'll have it for you Thursday. Uh, I'm going to cut it up. I'm going to do some quick videos about it. Go to AuntieTabbies.com slash Nikki M or Nick Kim, N-I-K-K-I-M, and get your hands. I forgot to, I, darn it, I forgot to take a picture. They have, I, I even used it last night at dinner. They have these two hot sauces. One is hibiscus, the other is pineapple, and then they have this guava barbecue sauce. Mm. I made chicken last night and I put the guava barbecue sauce on it and then I ki- kicked it up a little bit with some of the pineapple hot sauce. Oh of my course God. You did. Yeah. And I'm listening, I list, I, you guys know I love my spice. Okay. So I was trying to be fair. Like, I'm like, okay. I have friends that can't handle any spice whatsoever. I really do feel like it's it's kicky enough to be considered a hot sauce, mm-hmm. but it's not where it's going to blow you out if you just like, I want a little bit, but I don't want it to be like mouth on fire type of stuff, okay? So, and again, I'm really interested to share with you guys Auntie Tabby's story. She's from Jamaica. She uh, was co-owner of a restaurant called Blue Ridge in Jamaica, But this business with the sauces that she started, she puts back into the Jamaican community through um, community, uh, through a a childhood skate park, right? These are are kid 
organizations that help keep kids out of trouble, which as you know, with myself and Kim and our kids and being very parenting focused, I love this. So not only does buying some of the barbecue sauces and hot sauces help support this show, not only do you get a 10% off discount every single bo- every single time you buy the sauces, but your money also goes to a good cause in Jamaica. So if you guys can just go to auntietabbies.com slash Nikki N or Nick Kim, N-I-K-K-I-M. It's right there on your screen. Uh, you'll get the discount and you'll support the show and you'll really help a good cause. So really, really, really love you guys. Love the fact that we have this partner and I'm just really stoked to be able to do this. All right. Uh, real quickly though, I do want to give an update on the bridge. Did you know that this, obviously it makes sense given the name, It's Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge. This is the bridge that inspired Francis Scott Key to write the words to our national anthem back in 1814. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you two pictures, though. I mean, this thing went down. This is what it looked like. Yep. This is what it looked like. This is what it looks like now. That's the container ship. If you see it on the left right there on the top of the screen, that's the container ship. Now, I know, and this was like at 1 o'clock this morning. 120 ish, whatever this cargo ship was reporting, like kind of a mayday to have, they were having some sort of electrical problem or some sort of problem on the ship. And then they crashed into the bridge. Now, what a nightmare. They were having to pull people out of the water. Yeah. I mean, apparently yeah. they used sonar. There was, I think there's six people at last check missing. There were several cars down there. It's like mm. 50 feet to the bottom, right. Of the river. You know, I'm so naive, Kim. I'm very, very naive. That so, that I, I instantly thought in a in a battle between a bridge and a cargo ship, the bridge wins, right? Mm-hmm. Like my mind just. But then when I looked at the bridge, you know, obviously, especially that section right there that goes up and down, it's it's a weak point. I would assume. Do you remember? Well, they do it every year. They have this the report on the health of our nation's bridges, roadways, and bridges. Right. And consistently. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of bridges, mostly small bridges, but uh-huh. often s- substantial bridges that f- get failing grades. Yes, these bridges oh have been God, here yeah. for a long time. It's why President Biden put forth this thing that we need to rebuild our infrastructure, right? Because we know that we have these bridges that are not up to par. Right. Exactly. I would like to think that if that tanker ship hit the Golden Gate or hit the Bay Bridge. Right. That, that the bridge the, would win. The bridge would win. Yes. But that's not clearly always the case. No. And and obviously, like, look, I mean, look at also the height, right? I mean, if it wasn't up, if there wasn't any sort of communication, obviously. But this is a major thoroughfare. It's only like a little more than a mile, maybe mile and a half long bridge. But people use it every day to commute. I was listening to an interview with the Baltimore mayor and they are, you could hear the stress. President Biden is called, obviously, Transportation Secretary Buttigieg is called. You know, obviously, they are keeping their eye on it. And this is going to be a major problem once they hopefully, you know, obviously, we we, we, we pray for the best. But it's been since one o'clock this morning. So if they haven't found anybody yet, it's a recovery, unfortunately. Janet's not wrong. She said, I was stuck in the road construction at the Richmond San Rafael Bridge last night. Yeah. And I just kept thinking, what if there's an earthquake and mm-hmm. this the bridge goes down? And I that is that all the time. probably the bridge that I trust the least in the Bay Area. <laughs> That's the one uh-huh. where during heavy rains or, you know, what have you, chunks of the asphalt will fall. Right. Yeah. I mean, we've seen that happen at, at least three times that I can re- remember the, where big chunks of the bridge, the roadway have tumbled yeah. out. Not the structure, though, but they know they need to retrofit. They know they need to do extra work on that bridge. So that's the, one of the bridges that I would be. I get exactly what you're thinking. You mm. know, you would also think that. And I, I know I've played this, and hopefully you guys remember, most of you remember, the video that I played one time, I think maybe on this show, about what to do if your car hits the water. Oh, yes, I do remember, remember that. Remember that? Yes. I'm like, okay, you got to be prepared. Yeah, but you have to also be in your right mind. Like, you cannot That's what I'm thinking. Out. Well, I think, and at that point, 
you know, when you, when you watch, we watch, see that video, you're like, you know, this is going to happen. You're yeah. prepared. You're like, right. okay, here's what I'm going to do. You're not prepared for a bridge to come down. Well, I mean, one minute you're driving across the road, the next minute you're in the water and you got to think fast. You got to think fast. Your, your car is filling up. The thing mm -hmm. is, is you have to let the water fill up so the pressure releases so you that you can if you don't get your window down i'm saying uh mm -hmm. that you can open the door the door you have to stay calm i don't know how many people can stay calm when the bridge went out underneath them and their car fell in the water you know what i mean and you know if you're injured or whatever like that so you know what this also reminds and i'm not making light of this but i don't know how many people you know me and my movies the Mothman prophecies. Does, did anybody see that movie? Mm -mm. It's with Richard Gere. And I forget who the woman was. Uh, she's a well-known actress though, but Richard Gere was the main actor in it. The Mothman prophecies. And they had the end. I think, I think at the end of it, they said great tragedy on the river, Ohio. I think there was like this like power plant or something on the river or near the river. Mm -hmm. And then everyone thought it was going to be the power plant, but it was actually the bridge. And this thing exactly happened. There was traffic on the bridge right and then all of a sudden you know i don't know some bolt goes and the the suspension start going and all these people and cars slowly start going into the water it's freaking frightening man it is i just you know and there was construction workers that's who the main people are that they think either are in the water or you know the cars went in the water because there was construction happening and apparently some of the people on either end of the bridge likely saved so many people's lives before oh, wow. it was it was clear what was happening because they stopped traffic immediately because again this is a bridge that is a major thoroughfare even though it was one o'clock in the morning it's like saying no one's crossing you know whatever bridge in the bay area people are constantly crossing it it's never empty and so mm -hmm. yeah our hearts go out to baltimore uh this is going to be a long time to fix i can imagine i mean i don't know I, I don't know how how quickly they can get that done but knowing that this is something that connects you know baltimore people to their works to their homes and things like that i can't imagine how devastating it is in addition to the people injured or sadly killed because of this accident so we will keep um we'll keep our eye on it um <laughs> brian i'm heading across the richmond san rafael bridge today thanks kim you're welcome i go to the dmv in Corte madera <laughs> because it's so much more calm and orderly there than the dmv in the east bay i used to do that i used to drive to the los gatos dmv mm -hmm. uh just because it was just not as packed so we all have our favorite DMV, we all have our right? favorites exactly mm -hmm. but yeah our hearts go out to it i just feel it's not news that you ever ever want to wake up to no of course and you know i think a lot of us can relate because here in the bay area we're bridge drivers most yeah, of us exactly. our commute has at least one bridge in it right and we were just bitching last yesterday about yeah. the upkeep on bridge the tolls the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> but i feel like that's covered come on now let's go i don't think we need to raise the tolls up there that much but yeah it would yeah. be interesting to see and again this wasn't this wasn't an infrastructure thing with the with the Baltimore Bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, this was a cargo ship hit the bridge, leading to its collapse. So, uh, right, and it's not why, terrorism. But why? At this point. Like, what I'm saying is, it that shouldn't happen. You know, we've had we've had ships hit bridges in the Bay Area. What was that one hit the Bay Bridge? Remember, it was a big yeah. to do. And I, or the Golden Gate Bridge, I thought it was because of the fog. Wasn't there one that did that as well? I, would they, they I don't it, remember, but I would yeah. imagine that's exactly. the case. Exactly. These things happen. That's why I'm always like, why did the bridge lose? Like, and then I know I remember the one that hit the Bay Bridge piling. Yeah. And, so these and, the, and it led to some type of oil leak. I don't know if you recall that. Yeah. It was a big story. But the bridge was fine. Yeah. So what raggedy ass old shape was this bridge in i know but again let me show the picture i mean i just kind of feel because of you know that middle part right there which is the part that goes up to let the ships through mm -hmm. right um that it's a weak point again i'm not an engineer so some maybe somebody better can explain it yeah because it just doesn't seem to be the same strength so if you hit the bridge part right there between the wide thing uh, the widest part, maybe it's just weaker there. I don't know. Um, mm. But yeah, it's it's crazy. It's really, really sad. Um, so our hearts go out to Baltimore. We'll keep our eye on it. Kim's keeping her eye on it as well. Yeah. Um, another headline that I'm sure many people did not want to wake up to. Well, I know one person didn't want to see yesterday was poor old Diddy. P. Mm. Diddy Sean Combs. Uh, he had his houses raided in L.A., and Miami 
yesterday. Uh, so when I got off air, <laughs> I was, you know, preparing for this show. I was enthralled. Now, listen, I, we talked about quiet on the set, the Nickelodeon documentary yesterday. We know all about Harvey Weinstein, um, Bill Cosby, uh, so many men that have been taken down because of past sexual assaults, allegations, uh, crimes that have been proven in a court of law and are, are getting their due justice. The crap surrounding Sean Combs, P. Diddy, Diddy, whatever the hell you want to call him nowadays, um, they've been going on for years. And it's not just... It's not just uh, a recent thing. There was a video, and I, I wasn't able to pull it because I literally saw it right before we came on air. One of his neighbors, his current neighbors, you know, because all the paparazzi are out in front of the home, was like, there's buses, buses of underage or young-looking women coming at all hours of the night to Sean Combs' home. Now, I know some people might be saying, who cares about P. Diddy? This isn't about P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs. This is about men specifically in power and people turning a blind eye to what they know is going on. So if you haven't heard, again, federal agents raided the home of L.A. and Miami of Sean Combs. He's a movie mogul. He was with Jennifer Lopez back in the day. Uh, he's dated all sorts of people. He's had TV shows. I mean, the guy, he was, I think he was just, was it last year at the Grammys or the MTV movie? Uh, music awards announcing his new album, all sorts of crap. Okay. Now Homeland security investigators, uh, carried out the raid. They, there weren't a lot of details, but again, Combs has been accused of sexual assault and sex trafficking in multiple civil lawsuits over the last several months. And these allegations have swirled around him for years. Uh, he's 54 years old. He's been a producer, a label executive, an occasional rapper. He's been on many, many albums. Um, you know, he was linked to Mary J. Blige, the notorious B.I.G. Uh, for people in, in our generation, we know who he is. OK, now the case was a 35 page complaint uh, and it's been built up over decades. Apparently, uh, he's uh, he has been accused and settled. He was sued for sexual assault by Cassie. That's her performing name, Cassandra Ventura. They settled out of court. Uh, obviously, he paid her a huge sum. He's denied all the allegations against him, and he is innocent until proven guilty. But they are searching. I'm assuming for evidence, you know, thumb drives, videos, pictures, all sorts of things. Now, again, this isn't just specifically about Sean Combs, P. Diddy, Diddy, whatever. This is what's going on. What, what went on in the past in which now there is, there is this reckoning? And this is beyond kind of a Me Too type of thing because I feel like, especially in the music industry, there is this turning of the blind eye. It's like, I'm I'm a rapper, let's just say. There's a certain lifestyle I want. I want to be surrounded by these hot girls that I'm going to give careers to. Uh, here's a little bit of the video. This was yesterday on CNN. I'm going to play a little bit of you so you could see how big of a response was at the homes of PD. Well, we know from HSI, that's the uh, Department of Homeland Security's uh, Homeland Security Investigation Agency, uh, that they are the lead agency on scene right now at both of these residents, both here in Los Angeles, also in Miami. Uh, again, it's worth pointing out that we don't know the specific allegation right now, uh, the, the alleged crime that authorities believe may have been committed or evidence thereof uh, at either of these residences. But it is telling that HSI is the lead because uh, they uh, have been at the forefront front of particularly human trafficking investigations. Now, HSI may not be a household name, but these federal agencies uh, agents work across the country, indeed have people who are posted around the world uh, with a large uh, uh, focus on human trafficking, ensuring that people aren't Crazy. trafficked for uh, purposes of work, for purposes of uh, uh, you know sexual uh, work. Uh, and so they launch investigations whenever, whenever they believe federal crimes may have been committed. Uh, so again, we don't know the specific allegation, but right now they are the lead uh, investigative agency. We have 
also reached out, it's worth pointing out, uh, to uh, Combs' attorney, to Combs' PR person uh, regarding these uh, searches at both locations. We have not yet heard back uh, from them as well. But, you know, one thing is you and Joey were just talking there about the process of getting a warrant and, and going to these locations. Uh, it's, you know, worth pointing out that authorities will leave behind a receipt of what, if anything, they seized. And so Combs uh, himself and his representatives uh, will get some indication of what type of property may have been seized uh, pursuant to this uh, this uh, warrant that, that may have been conducted there. Again, you look at some of the imagery, we're talking about dozens of federal agents at both locations bringing in uh, a, a large scale response as well as the mobile command vehicles. Uh, it's worth pointing out again, Wolf, that just due to the size of these residences, you know, I've been part of uh, searches in the past at residences, big and small, uh, you know, would surprise no one that the larger residences take longer because authorities have to go looking in any possible location where an item in a search warrant may be located. And sometimes that's in plain view. Sometimes that's, you know, think about all, all of our houses where we store mm -hmm. certain things and closets and cabinets yep. going through all of those areas. But sometimes, and I'm not saying that, that this is the case here, uh, but individuals, uh, you know, may secrete items in different places where authorities have to do a little more work in order to find it. Now, if we're talking about electronic Medium, like toilets, the, the sophisticated the technology president. used by federal agencies th uh, th th this day and age uh, is really something to include. You know, people might not be familiar, but they're actually uh, canines, dogs that are trained to sniff out electronic mediums. So much as though you would see uh, the TSA at the airport with an explosive canine, federal agents and officers have canines that can search through a residence for uh, that telltale indication uh, that these dogs are trained to search for any type of electronic medium. So all of that would take time again if that's part of this warrant uh all right and so that's pretty much it i mean it's we'll see what they come up with i did end up finding the video this is a video of the neighbor now again this is just a neighbor driving by but you can get a sense obviously there's going to be a lot of paparazzi out there but people what they see and what they may be reporting on sean comes because they're fed up with it I live right next to him. He do too much. He be like, he be like buses, like big ass buses. He didn't see all type of shit hop out. Especially at nighttime, like around three o'clock in the morning. It gets wild. I'm his neighbor. My basketball go over there. I just let it be. He's <laughs> just being silly. But I, again, and that's just one person driving by. But it's this idea of people seeing what is going on. Now, Wow. A lot of people, I, I've heard one, and again, these are all rumors. He is innocent until proven guilty. Okay, I'm going to say that over and over again. But even some people are saying, is he linked to Harvey, uh, Jeffrey Epstein? You know what I mean? Like, did he ever go to the island? These are the ways people are, are worrying about this lifestyle where if you make enough money, you can literally traffic young girls, even boys. You know, it's... I'm just so I'm disgusted by the whole thing, but just there, it requires people being quiet for it to go on. And I think that people are done being quiet. Uh, Mama three boys says, I'm not surprised by this news considering how his quote unquote music depicts women. The fact that he has daughters himself makes it so much worse. I hear what you're saying, Mama Three Boys. I also push back, though, and I'm not against you, but just this whole idea of I have daughters, so I would never do this. How about you're a human being? <laughs> I, and you just don't do that to other human beings. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a, a father or a husband or have women and everyone has a woman in their life. Right. And it's just, um, it's, it's concerning. Uh, and if the, and if it's proven, it's disgusting. And I don't want to hear any sort of argue, you know, R Kelly was making kind of the argument. Um, and, and I will say it, it hurt people kind of hurt people, abuse people, abuse people, that, that sort of mentality. I don't know about John Combs childhood, his upbringing or anything like that. If that's going to be an excuse, um, Randy says he's guilty until proven innocent doesn't appear to be that way at this point. The public has already convicted him. Oh yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is. Um, with most things, I, unless you're the former president, of course. I mean, the former president can be caught on tape saying some of the nasty things that he does. And nobody seems to turn a blind eye. Uh, everyone turns a blind eye to it, apparently, and still votes for the guy. So does race matter? You know, does it matter? I mean, in Harvey Weinstein's case, it didn't matter. Who's the guy? Matt Lauer. Remember, Matt Lauer's lost his job. I think he was trying to get back on TV, but I don't know what the latest is with Matt Lauer. Um, so, you know. 
there for every R. Kelly and Bill Cosby, there's Harvey Weinstein's and Matt Lowers and Dan Schneider's, who was from Quiet on the Set. So I don't feel like people should necessarily pull a race card and say, oh, it's because he's black. They're going after him and all these white guys. You know, Jeffrey Epstein, <laughs> many people believe he did not kill himself, that he just knew too much, but obviously he's sick, right? And it's just, it's, it's crazy the age we live in. You know, I just saw um, a news headline from the other day. Was it yesterday or yeah, yesterday, a teacher who is still teaching in a San Jose high school uh, has been arrested for an alleged assault from mm. like 20 years ago. Gross. Here's a question with Diddy. OK, it's clear to me he's suffering from some serious mental stuff, right? Well, I think anybody that does that to anybody else is. But yes. Well, I mean, you've seen. You you know we're talking. This is the same guy. It's, this is the same guy that has the anti-Semitic things, right? No 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 no. You're thinking of Kanye West. Oh my God. Oh, this totally is Sean different. Sean Combs. Okay. This is P Diddy, Puff Daddy. Um, oh, I don't. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a picture of. Him Sorry, I get my already. rappers confused because I don't listen to this confused. music, so yes, I don't. Yes yes yes. You're thinking of Kanye West. Now, if Kanye West did this, that's what I'm thinking. He's nuts anyway, so it like wouldn't doesn't surprise me, right? You're thinking of Yay. Yeah. That's Kanye West. And yeah, I would say, you know what? If it was Kanye West, I don't think a lot of people would be that scared of it or not no, not scared, that surprised by it just because he has mental issues. But no, Kanye West is not accused of doing any of these things. Mm. This is Sean Combs, P. Diddy. Gee, we don't all look alike. <laughs> no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. But because I don't listen to yes, the music, don't listen to the music. I get yeah. my my rappers are interchangeable. It would be the same thing with white country guys. Yeah. Like I don't oh, listen yeah. to that music either. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No, but yeah. So yeah, I, I understand if it was that line of thinking, but no, but the other fact is people are coming out of the woodwork with videos, with things that are just very questionable at the very least. Of why are you doing that? Why are you having that person? Why is this woman being paid off? All these sorts of stories are coming out, which seems to be kind of the process. All of a sudden, this guy people are fed up with, and now all these weird stories are coming out. It happened with Bill Cosby. It happened with R. Kelly. It happened with Harvey Weinstein. There comes a point where people are just done. Uh, Lady Beatrice says race isn't a factor in any of it. It all comes down to an industry that, as you've said, Nikki will turn a blind eye to these things with the right price. Exactly. Like, I'm not saying Cassie, you know, wasn't assaulted, but she took, obviously she was paid. There was a payout. They settled out of court, right? I mean, it's money. We're talking about money. Now, I'm not saying that she was wrong to do that. Maybe she didn't want to go through the, the court case, all those sorts of things. But yeah, it's just so frustrating and sick if the allegations against uh, Sean Combs, Diddy, are true. And uh, yeah, he's probably shaking in his boots if you have Homeland Security searching both of your homes. Now, again, we don't have all the details. We just know that he's been facing charges. So we have to wait for all that to come out. Wow. Yeah. So freaking throw away the key. I'm so sorry. this isn't a case of being nuts this is a case of maybe as was said in the chat power yeah and well it's just image wealth yeah and... i could do whatever and it's not and honestly the allegations mm. kim are not just with women uh there was a young man that came forward and said that diddy was forcing him to um you know have sex with male prostitutes in front of him these are all allegations right wow. but it's it goes across gender sexuality all sorts of things that's the allegations that are coming out against sean combs and it's nuts and again i don't think it's you know again it's not kanye west i don't think it's a mental issue also i think it's an image i think it's a i have money I can pick up the phone. I can have a mm -hmm. bunch of naked chicks at my house, do what I want to whatever hour in the night, ply them with booze, ply them with drugs, perhaps. Who knows? And it's just, this sucks. Mm. This whole lifestyle sucks. And it's exploiting these young girls, many of whom probably are hoping for a break in the industry. Yeah. Exactly, Ms. Organic. And it's, and it's sick. And again, going back to yesterday's conversation about Hollywood, don't let your daughters hang out with men that can further their career. Like It's just, it ain't worth it. It's not worth it. At least not until there's a reckoning. You know what I mean? Not unless there's a mm. reckoning. And uh, and I think that uh, the reckoning is coming for, very, uh, for a how lot, a lot it, of people out there. How does it go unchecked like that? Because you pay people mm, off. I guess so. Money. Money makes the world go round, right? Cream. That's all that matters. All right. Um, 
let's move on. Let's do some headlines. There's so much other stuff to talk about. I had to talk about it though. I just, it, it makes my blood boil. Anytime there are stories like this, it just makes me so upset. And I know that he's innocent until proven guilty, Randy, but you know, with the, the confluence of allegations and payoffs, it, you know, makes my eye twitch that there's something going on here. And, um, yeah, Eric, how's it going? Uh, unchecked. Look at Trump. You know, you just get people to love you and to yeah. back you up and if and, and to keep critics away. And that's how it happens. All right. Let's do some headlines. Make sure you click that thumbs up button to show support for the show. And here's Kim with the news. Now from around the world to up your street, the Nikki Maduro Show presents News Czar Kim McAllister. I'll start with this story just because you were just talking about it moments ago, but the music producer who filed a lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs is now accusing actor Cuba Gooding Jr. of sexual harassment. Ooh, NBC News is wow. reporting yeah, that uh, Gooding Jr. was added to the lawsuit filed by Rodney Lilrod Jones against Combs last month, or Combs last month, just after hours after federal officials raided Diddy's homes or mansions in Miami and Los Angeles. Diddy under federal investigation related to sex trafficking, assault, illegal narcotics, and firearms. The updated lawsuit alleges Gooding Jr. groped Jones while they were on Diddy's yacht. Gooding has not been charged with any crime. He is reportedly not connected to the raids that were conducted at Combs' parent uh, properties on Monday. Yeah, that's crazy story. Wow. The search continues for missing people after a container ship crashed into a Baltimore bridge overnight, causing it to collapse. Officials say at least six construction workers who were on the bridge when it plunged into the river remain unaccounted for. Mm. Two were, re were rescued overnight. One uh, is hospitalized. And again, the search continues for the others. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, I'm on the Baltimore Sun because I keep updating the story, mm -hmm. right? And it hit a support column. So I think that's, we were asking, like, how does it just collapse? How does the bridge lose against the mm -hmm. cargo ship? It's, uh, it, again, I'm not an engineer. Uh, I don't know, but it just kind of seems like, like, can we have like fail saves? Can we have backups to the backups? I don't know. Uh, it's so sad. It is so, so sad. You know, as Eric mentioned earlier, these cargo ships are massive. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. And when you Heavy look at this too. ship, I mean, the ship yeah. is crazy big when in relation to the, the bridge itself. It's right. huge. I mean, the, the ship is huge. So is it that these ships are getting too big? I don't know. I mean, but again, how, you know, okay. So by ship, by plane, we're having, we're having, you know, transportation issues. Buttigieg is going to be busy, right? So, I mean, mm -hmm. we've got issues. I do think that cargo ships, when obviously sailed safely uh, and not leaking oil or doing anything like that, are, is a good way to, to move cargo, obviously. But maybe we do need to start looking at how long, how big, how heavy these ships, ships are, just in case something goes wrong, as appears to be the case with this ship, that it doesn't take out a friggin' bridge. So, yeah. I, I mean, you showed us pictures of the bridge before and the bridge after. Yeah, here's before. Uh -huh. Here's after. Ugh. Look at that. Check out the bridge with the ship, ship coming in. That and ship that's is the, huge. That's just the nose. Mm -hmm. That's the nose of the bridge. I mean, look at all that cargo. Look at all that weight coming out behind it. Yeah. Oh, and my heart goes out to And then again, the infrastructure crisis that this becomes because this is a major thoroughfare. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, that's huge. That ship is it's enormous. huge. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, the Supreme Court, another huge thing is currently hearing arguments in a case that could limit access to the abortion pill Mifepristone. Yeah. The judges are reviewing an appeals court decision blocking recent FDA changes that made this medication more widely available. The FDA changes expanded who may prescribe Mifepristone and allowed it to be dispensed through the mail as well. Now so, I was telling, yeah, I was telling Kim, Kim, I was telling you before the show, the um, one analyst that I was listening to this morning was hinting. Now, of course, we don't know, hinting that they might not have any standing to bring this case, which the Supreme Court can deal. If you remember, gay marriage also had the same thing, uh, which was kind of like, how are you harmed 
by this being happening. Now, the argument from some of the doctors that are against, you know, mifepristone being available through the mail is what if somebody has a partial abortion and then they have to come to me and then I have to complete it and it goes against my belief system. To mm -hmm. that, I say, don't be a doctor then, okay? Right. Don't be a doctor. If you want to go into a certain job sector, make sure that you can do the job 100% of the time. How about that? Pisses me off. Uh, I mean, okay. In my experience with this medication, uh -huh. I've seen it used for people that are having miscarriages to expel right. whatever's left, right? Uh -huh. If you didn't do that, you would have to have surgery. So it's a much better healthcare option. Also, if you have a tubal pregnancy, they will often give it to women who need to expel that in a real hurry before their tubes burst and they die right right so this is a really important medication for people <clears throat> i have one a relative a very good friend has a niece mm -hmm. who was it was prescribed to and she was misdiagnosed as having an ectopic oh no and took it and it didn't work and so they gave it to her a second time and the baby actually was not ectopic and managed to survive, but was born with deformities and is struggling. So, I mean, you have it. I think it shouldn't just be prescribed by anyone, right? I think you really need to have someone who knows what they're doing right. prescribe this medication because I've seen it go sideways in that way. But to limit it to say that it's not useful in certain situations when women could die yes or have exactly. to have major invasive surgery exactly. if it's not available no mm -mm. no it's, and if it's there crazy. wasn't standing then why did they take the case at all well they do that i mean again they did the same thing with gay marriage you make your case before the judges so um let's see i i have some of the things up so justice alito seems to be fixated on the idea that someone has to be able to sue uh, the Supreme Court has rejected the someone must have standing approach to Article three standing since 1973. Uh, Clarence Thomas has asked, but who would have standing? And one of the attorneys says, if the question is, if people who oppose abortion would have standing, the answer is no. You can't just say I'm harmed because I'm against abortion. Someone actually needs to be harmed. Like just your right. feelings don't have to be. But so, don't they, they decide these things before they even take the case. A lot of cases that are, um, you know, put before the Supreme Court or attempted to put before the Supreme Court get kicked away. Yeah. Like now nah, we we don't even want to hear this. We're not even going to there's no standing to hear this. So take it somewhere else. Right. Yeah. So the U.S. Solicitor General Elizabeth Prelegar uh, is now arg is arguing, uh, was arguing, this was an update that I'm following, before the Supreme Court, arguing that disagreeing with the FDA doesn't mean that the Christian group Alliance Defending Freedom has the right or standing to challenge the FDA with the legality of mifeprestone. So again, it's your beliefs, your personal beliefs do not mean you have standing over a federal agency charged with making sure drugs are safe and can be used by all Americans. So I'm optimistic, Kim. I really, really am. I'm really know. optimistic. I mean, this is a really conservative court. And I'd, if they if there was no standing or there were questions about standing, then I wonder why they would even take the case. And because it's this court, I have real questions about- You're not about, optimistic about I don't it. believe in them. They've They've- I mean, I think they've well. Let me let me let me ruined uh, the rights of women. So no, this is another thing. There's also consequences. So again, there's the question of does the Supreme Court want to get into an argument over a federal agency's role? Are, is the Supreme Court going have to going to have to determine the safety? Basically, take the job over of the FDA, because that's basically what this Christian group wants to be done. The FDA is charged with determining whether or not a drug is safe for people and can be used in this manner. The Supreme Court, I highly doubt even this conservative one, wants to take on the role of a federal agency. And that's what they would basically be determining every single time somebody has a a problem with a medication that's been deemed safe by the agency that this country has determined should do that job, they're going to determine? No. Now I get it. It is a conservative court. Um, I'm still going to say I'm optimistic, at least from the analysis that I have been reading. I do believe that it's not going to continue because they have a lack of standing. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I'm hoping for. Well, 
How about this lady? Okay. This is Nicole Shanahan. And she is likely going to be the person that runs with Robert uh, F. Kennedy Jr. Mm -hmm. He is expected to announce that uh, she'll likely be his running mate today. He publicly floated a number of people considered for his vice presidential (laughs) pick, including, of course, New York Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers. The move could give Kennedy's long shot bid for the presidency an influx of cash and momentum as he aims to get on more state ballots. She's um, an attorney. So, yeah. Yeah. And she was born in Oakland, which may be why he's speaking in Oakland. I don't know. Whatever. He's a wackadoo. Visa and MasterCard, Mm. it would appear, are coming to a settlement to lower merchant fees that could potentially save consumers billions of dollars. Oh, okay. The fees credit card companies charge to small and large businesses actually cost merchants 2% of the transaction. That's passed along to customers. Of course, we pay for everything. The settlement forces credit card companies to cap the fee over the next five years and then negotiate a new swipe fee with merchants. So might be a little bit less. I mean, it's kind of annoying. Like, I get it. That's why people are like, if you pay with cash, you'll get this sort of discount because they don't mm-hmm. want to pay all these freaking fees. So I get it. And new orders for long-lasting goods rose more than expected in February. Figures from the Census Bureau showed durable goods orders increased 1.4% after two straight monthly declines. Excluding defense, new orders increased 2.2% for the month. Transportation equipment leading February's gain. All indicators that our economy is on the way back, that our economy is doing well. Well, we already know that, yeah, inflation is going down. It's People don't want to hear it. If you're against Biden, obviously you don't want to hear it. Um, But... I'm really, really glad to hear that news. So, yeah, hopefully we're turning the corner. It's a good time for Biden for it to happen. So, I mean, you might not want to hear it, but the, you know, the numbers are the numbers and the facts are the facts. Trump doesn't want to hear it. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Don't get roofied. One example of a sign that some (laughs) California (laughs) bars and nightclubs are adding to comply with a new state law. They're required to provide kits so customers can test their drinks to see if they've been spiked. This can be in the form of test strips, stickers, straws, or other devices. The Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control revealed yesterday the signs must be up by July 1st and will affect about 2,400 businesses. So you may see signs and bars that says they don't get roofied. Yeah. Right? They have these, like, so it looks like a sticker that you could put on top of your drink, right? Mm -hmm. So it covers the entire top of your drink. And then there's, like, a hole for you to put your straw through. So, I mean, obviously, it's a lot harder to get, let's say, powder through the straw into the cup without it being noticed. Mm -hmm. And so that's, is it just not sad that we need these things? How about just don't roofie people? How about shoot your shot? And if you get turned down, you don't drug the person in order to get them to bed. How about that? You know? I guess I it doesn't matter going. whether a woman says no or not. Right. And I'm not, you I don't, know, I, I'm not going to say it's just Maybe women dudes either. get roofied as well. As exactly. Well. I don't know. I mean, you never know. I mean, yeah. this, it's, it can go either way. I'm just saying, like, don't do it. Just don't. Yeah. If it looks like that, steer clear. <laughs> no. Again, like, I, I, again, I think, knock on wood, I've never been roofied. Um, Ever. I mean, you know, there's been times where I'm like, I only had two drinks and I'm really, really hungover, but I highly doubt I've ever been roofied. But I, I can't, I can imagine how frightening it is, especially if you're alone, if you're a woman or maybe your friend is with you, but they go off with somebody, which is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing to do. Um, don't do that. Don't abandon your friends. You go together, you leave together type of thing. Buddy system. Always. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's just, it sucks that this is the message we have to give our kids is you got to watch out for everything you can't smoke a joint if you because there could be fentanyl in it you can't pop a pill because it might be fentanyl in it you can't take a drink because there might be fentanyl or roofie in it it's like and i know that you shouldn't be doing drugs but i'm just saying it's just scary out there it just is talk about the beach anyone (laughs) Mm. yes indeed (sighs) fast food workers across california are counting down 
to more money. The oh, new $20 yes. minimum wage law starts on Monday, raising pay by 25%. It's about three times the federal minimum wage of $7.25 an hour. Business owners say costs will also increase for them and for customers as well. Some even considering layoffs or closing locations. Yeah. Pizza Hut already let 1,200 delivery drivers go. They will rely, they say, on gig workers for that help of delivery. So. Um, so I, I, this is in, this is what we're going to talk about next as well. I kind of, yes, it's the layoffs and, and I'm glad Kim did it in her news, but here's the question. A lot of them are saying like the vitality bowls, right? They have a couple locations in the Bay area and they're like, well, the next one, uh, well, we're going to reduce our employee, our staff, and then we're probably not going to open any new ones. We'll do it outside of California. And so I can already hear people arguing, this is California politics. This is the problem. You can't pay people $20 an hour to work at Taco Bell or a Vitality Bowl or whatever. Okay, so let's accept that. Let's just go down that road. So we're not going to pay people anywhere. It's not as if $20 an hour is enough to make ends meet in the Bay Area. Okay, Mm -hmm. it's not. I think we all know that. Okay, so what is the answer? If it's not paying people more, right, and it's not making college affordable so that they can get a degree to get these jobs that apparently, you know, we should all be getting and not working at Taco Bell. What is the answer? If we don't raise the minimum wage, if we don't raise wages at all, how do people afford to live here? Like it can't. And I say this all the time. It can't just be rich people because mm. rich people like to go to Taco Bell. Rich people like to go to Vitality Bowl. Rich people like to go get their car washed. Rich people like to go to. Re- yeah, like, you like society that has diverse jobs, right? Because you don't want to do it. And it's and and, and yet we don't want to pay people more. It's math. It is math. And I understand if you raise wages, then costs can go up. I get that. I understand, but we have to also keep up with inflation at least a little bit, right? We have to at least cost of living increases. We have to understand the national (laughs) minimum wage is ridiculous. I think it's still seven bucks and change, right? But California's, it needs to be high because it costs a lot. And it's not like we're reducing housing prices. It's not like we're getting rid of Proposition 13. It's not like we're doing all of those sorts of things, right? So you tell me. If not raising the minimum wage, then what? What is the answer? So you guys let me know in the comments while Kim finishes her news. Well, it, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I it just feels, um, you know, yeah. Okay, we'll move <laughs> it's on. It's a hard one. Okay. Yeah, it's, it is a hard one, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> it's early in the morning. I'm, my brain is somewhere else. Yes. Okay, um, let's discuss... El Cerrito High School. Why don't okay, we? Okay, let's do oh, that. You know what I was going to tell you before we move on? Mm. Did you see the story about the woman suing over this whole minimum wage increase? And her argument mm. is this. Mm. She says, why, if you're going to raise the minimum wage to 20 bucks an hour, okay. why are you targeting fast food workers? What about the people that work at the Hallmark store or the this store or the that store or the clerk here or the clerk there? Right. Why is it, or why are, and she's an I, uh, somebody who owns a bunch of mcdonald's or whatever it is right she said why are you targeting specifically fast food and that's not fair oh, that's do you an think that question. do you think that the people that work at you know pick a store uh, the dollar store general or whatever it is do you think they don't have the same issues as far as the cost of living or everything else well if so, they're making minimum wage then they get the raise too no only the fast food workers get the 20 bucks an hour not all the other people that make oh, minimum wage. I didn't. I thought it was. I thought it was uh, it's universal. Just, no, it's just fast food workers. That's it. Oh, I didn't realize that. It's How not, did I miss that caveat? Okay. Yeah. So there are people in other industries or in other you know types of work that make the state minimum wage or the county minimum wage because I think in some counties the minimum wage is set higher than the state. Okay, so right now it's sixteen dollars an hour in California, right. but fast food workers will get twenty dollars. Is that what you're That's saying? Right. That's right. Okay. So sh- the owner of this this franchisee of the McDonald's is saying, "Well, that's not fair to all the other workers. Why are you singling this industry out?" Right. Right. That so is that is a good question. Why actually. aren't you paying the 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 worker that scoops your ice cream or the worker that you know rings you up at what food. have you? Right. The, ca- the, the cashier at the thing. gas station, whatever it yeah. may be. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, now, do you think, okay, and again, let me know in the comments what the answer mm -hmm. is if it's not raising the minimum wage, but do you think $16 an hour for minimum wage is good money? Um, you know, uh, Chris says, I need $30 an hour to make rent. Like, that's my question. It's if we're, and, and if we're not going to limit housing prices and rent increases and, and all that sort of stuff, how do people live? That's it's a basic question. How do minimum wage workers, which are in so many different industries, whether it's fast food at 20 bucks or another minimum wage job at 16, how are they supposed to make ends meet? And do not say it's only for teenagers because we know it's not. We know that these are adults getting these jobs. Mm -hmm. And so if we know that it's adults getting these jobs, right? And the employer wants adults doing this job because teenagers are in school and their businesses are open. Um, then what do we do? Then what do we do? And I, I'm really being um, sincere with my question because there's so many people that are saying you can't raise minimum wage. Prices for everything will go up. Prices are already up. People can't afford life in the Bay Area. Yeah. So what do we do? And I, I mean, I think it's true that people in different industries can't afford life, right? So yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, let's discuss what's going on at El Cerrito High School. Yeah. They've got some problems there. Uh, they're about to see extra security on campus. This after a fight sent Ooh. El Cerrito High School into lockdown. That happened last Friday during the lunch hour. The West Contra Costa Unified School District says intruders came in and got into a fight with a student and then ran off when safety officers arrived. No weapons were used, only minor injuries reported, but the school district says it's Ugh. working with law enforcement to keep the kids safe there. That's really scary. Yeah, I mean, ugh, I hate hearing stories like that. That sucks. Mm. In uh, other news, the mm. state is now helping the city of Oakland deal with its homelessness crisis. This picture is actually of, of an encampment in uh, in Sacramento. But this, not that I couldn't find a picture of Oakland. I just searched for <laughs> encampment pictures and this one popped there you up. Go. Trust me, Oakland has a many of its own. The city has more than 5,000 people living on the streets, but not enough resources to clear out these encampments. That's where Caltrans comes in. So over the next two years... Seems like it's taking quite a while. The crews will target areas along Interstate 880, starting with the Hagenberger Corridor near the airport. The goal is to also provide outreach and shelter options to prevent the same people from returning. So, yeah, because yeah. that's what happens, right? They mm -hmm. and we saw this in San Jose yep. with that soccer park area. You clear one spot, they just all pick Comes it up right and they back. move, blue, either move right back or move like scooch over twenty feet. Well, of right? course they do. Yeah. Back to the what we're going to talk about after this. Where are they supposed to go if there's not enough shelters, and there's not enough housing, and they can't find a job that pays them enough? Where do you think these people are going? It's it's obvious. I don't understand why it's not that hard to figure out. People are just fed up and they want it to go away. Like you throw something away. There is no way. People need to live. They need to be able to afford to live. It's crazy. Or, I mean, yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, maybe there are places to go. Where? There's a lot of shelters. There's a lot of little mini houses. They built mini houses in yeah. Oakland. I mean, you know, they they've Project Home Key. They've opened all these, you know, little old motels that they've spruced up, and they have home people living there and staying there temporarily until they get their feet on the ground, type of thing. Yeah, and then some people are like, well, they can move to other, like cheaper states, right? And then you have people move to cheaper states, and then the price of housing goes up in those states, and mm. and and then it just starts all over again. It's almost as if we need to watch wages, and we do need to do something about rent, affordable housing, building it so that it comes down. Um, you have to build more. I was just reading this article. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday, but there's a housing development going up right at the border between San Jose and Campbell. I, was reading, I think it was in the Mercury News. And people in Campbell are upset because it's a San Jose development, but it's like right in their backyard because it's right on the border. And it's an apartment unit. I think there's like 100 units or something like that. And I get it. I get that you want your town to stay small and quaint and it doesn't fit into the aesthetic. We need to build housing. That's mm -hmm. it. And either you participate in the process of where it's coming from and they're trying to do them on the borders, right? And your public transit and all those sorts of things. You either participate 
or they're going to do it for you. And I hate to be so harsh, but we need to build, build, build. Yeah. And I know it sucks. And I know it's congested. And I know that there are valid concerns about traffic and water and infrastructure and things like that. But the truth of the matter is we do not have nowhere near enough housing for the amount of people that live in the Bay Area. And yeah. that's it. And you could put, you could say, you could scream with your fingers in your ears. No, there's not enough water. No, I don't want it in my neighborhood. Fine. Knock yourself out. It's a terrible pastime. The building is going to happen. So I would say just participate, you know, work with it, work with developers. I drive down. What street is that? If people know Campbell, I think it's Union. There's a basket. I don't know. It's union. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of apartment units and it's cute. There's a park there. People are always walking their dogs. People get in their mind. Oh my God, it's an apartment uh, complex. It's going to bring all the, it's fine. It's fine. Stop being so, uh, married to single family home neighborhoods. They're nice too, but we need more high density housing in certain areas to handle this. Um, and it's not ruining the Bay Area. Vicky, She's like, so let's ruin the Bay Area. It's not ruining it. Mm -hmm. It is literally what happens everywhere. We grow. We grow. And and when we grow, people need somewhere to live. It's And if we do it mindfully, if we do it near public transportation, if we participate in the process instead of fighting progress, then maybe these can be, you know, Something that everyone can enjoy because I would much rather see apartment units than this image on my screen. I don't know yeah. about you, Vicky, but I would much rather see that. So, yeah, no, I'm off agree. My blog. Agree. Shohai Otani, he says, a Dodger star, he had no idea that his close friend and former interpreter was involved in illegal gambling. Otani, who now has a new interpreter, spoke to the media yesterday for the first time since these allegations against Ipe Mizuhara came out last week. Mizuhara is accused of being involved in an Orange County-based illegal gambling ring and stealing millions of dollars from Otani. Otani says he is very sad and shocked about the allegations against someone that he trusted. He also says he never bet on baseball or any other sport, nor did he have anyone do so on his behalf. Otani also claims he had no knowledge of any payments made to him or made from his bank accounts to cover Mizuhara's gambling debts. I, this um, story is weird. Does Isn't it seem weird to you? I mean, how do you get access to four and a half million dollars of someone's money. You don't read the language. I mean, he, Mizuhara, whatever, reads the language and he probably put it before Otani and was like, here you go, sign it. Mm. I don't know. I mean, if that's how it, I don't know. Um, that's crazy. But again, oh God, I want to find it. I'm going to find it really quickly because people are like, how does this happen? You know, uh, you know, Otani is obviously from another country. Mm -hmm. This was, this was this uh, meme that I'm going to give a shout out to my husband. And they're like, welcome back to sports center presented by ESPN bet for more on the Otani <laughs> situation. We go to our fan duel L MLB Insider at our DraftKings studio in Los Angeles, brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook. Jeff, how could something like this happen? Right. And that's the truth. It's like yes. gambling is all around us. Mm -hmm. And we're like, Ooh, I wonder why the interpreter or I'm not Otani says he didn't do it, but how these players are sucked into it. I mean, yeah. they do ads now for FanDuel and DraftKings. Are you kidding me right now? Well, as you and I well know, they have an entire yeah, radio, radio station now exactly. de dedicated to sports betting for sports fans. So yeah, you're it's right. It's ridiculous. So like, oh, like stop acting like we don't know how stuff like this happens. This is how it happens. We like gambling. Lastly, and it's because I know you like this show. Oh, I know. Here I didn't watch is. it this season. I didn't mm. watch it because I found it to be boring. I think I'm over it. I think I broke my... Um, really? You know what I am watching? It's not that I've gotten better. It's not like my, my <laughs> TV choices have gotten better. I started watching... Well, first I started watching Love is Blind because there was this whole thing about one of the people looking like Megan Fox, which I found to be hilarious. So I watched the season and now I'm watching <laughs> so stupid Love Island in Australia, not what? even the American version. What I've been that? watching the um, Australia. So well, they, they go just to this put like attractive people on an island and say, go to town. Oh, and not only that, Kim, apparently I feel like it's in the rule book that the girls can only wear bathing suits oh, God. like in the evening during like the kickoff, like fire pit time they can maybe work real close but all day 
every day these girls just wear thong bikinis so if you like that and i'm always watching it and on this show there's some there's one thing that i really like on love is um love island they're only allowed one to two alcoholic drinks a day and if it's a beer it's a minute miniature bit a beer it's not even a real beer and it's there's no spirits like there's no vodka or anything you can have a glass of champagne at night but so they're just drinking water all day Okay, and and you could tell because there's none of this ridiculousness. But the other thing that I hate, the men apparently have to shower outside in front of everybody. Hmm. <laughs> so, what like, in all, the world are you watching? So there's an outdoor shower in which all the men apparently are. I'm not judging you a little bit, maybe. <laughs> but anyways, this is the new Bachelorette. That's going to be your announcement, right? Yeah, her name is Jenny Tran, and yeah. she will be the next lead on ABC's The Bachelorette. <laughs> The 26-year-old from Miami will be the first Asian-American lead in the show's two decades on the air. It took them a long time to get to an Asian-American woman. I know, woman. right? She's gorge, too. Didn't Tran watch the show, says though, the so opportunity feels honestly incredible, she said. <laughs> yeah, apparently she was she was kicked off a few women ago. Normally, the woman that's like second runner-up or even third mm-hmm. runner-up gets the best shot. But I guess that that woman wasn't ready to be. It's a lot to be Bachelorette, I would imagine. I know it's garbage. I know, Eric, it's garbage. Yeah, yeah. You know when I watch my reality TV shows when I'm like cleaning the house? Because you don't have to like sit there the whole entire time and watch it. I'm not going to watch a movie that I have to pay attention to. I watch crap television while I clean the house. Oh, Vilma watches Maths Australia. So that's married at first sight. I had to Google that because uh, they kept talking about it on Love Island. Right, so she says, I know it's a stupid show, but it gets my mind off Trump and world affairs. Exactly. That is why I watch crap television. It's because it's not the news. You guys know I'm up on my news. I'm up on all every freaking tragedy. I just want to watch train wrecks on reality TV shows. It's hilarious. I can't judge you because I know that it's often scripted and I still like Survivor. So, oh, Survivor is not. I mean, I think that like Love is Blind, Love Island, that's in one category. Survivor is funny. My, I want Survivor. There's a new season that has started. You know what I love doing <laughs> during Survivor, especially during the challenges, is yell at Jeff Probst. If I was on that show, I would tell that guy to shut the F up because he is the best. He is just like, oh my God, the wind is blowing. It's tickling your foot. Can you hang on? And I'm like, <laughs> Up. But I say it in a good way because he's the best. I think he's excellent. Um, I like survive. I like reality, quote unquote, TV shows because it's mind numbing and I don't have to really put too much thought into it. Yeah, so. sometimes after all the hard news of the day, yes! you just kind of want to check out a little exactly. bit. Exactly. I get it. I understand where you're coming from. Oh, but from. Eric's going to make me feel bad about it. They exploit their actors, mm. whatever. They're garbage and shouldn't be supported. Okay, mm. but people are going into it with their eyes open. I agree with you. And again, that's why I brought up Love Island. They're not plying them with alcohol. Some of these shows, they just keep plying them with alcohol that they humiliate themselves on national TV. These other people, I mean, the most they do is make out. And again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not defending Love Island as being a, a highbrow show, but I do like the fact that they don't ply these people with alcohol. And you can tell, you can absolutely tell they're, they're sober. During I it, think so. they would open themselves up to some lawsuits if they just put a bunch of people on an island, get them all drunk and say, Go to town. you know, wear, to, wear the bikini and shower outside and let's see what happens, right? And there's like garbage TV lets my brain calm down, probably because it's killing brain cells, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with that. So whatever. It seems, I have to tell you, it seems a little, I'm going to say sexist perhaps Hmm. this whole love australia thing check this out yeah this is their uh not that we want to go this was this is the season that i'm watching right now so that's tyra on the left the blonde in the middle she's the host that's the host look at Um, all the skimpy outfits and you can see the dudes in the background but it's definitely the focus is on the ladies here oh i'm telling love island and again Mm. they only wear bathing suits i'm like is anyone getting i mean they can wear cover-ups over it and whatever but Mm -hmm. they're always wearing bathing suits um, you know, and a lot of these people want to just be influencers. You'll get a lot of followers by being on the show, which means you get yeah. commercial deals. And when, if you want to be in that lifestyle, that's your thing, mm-hmm. knock yourself out. I'm not going to knock it. I'm just, yeah. I'm going to spray dead television. That's for sure. Okay. This is the real last story. Look okay. at these parrots. <laughs> the San Diego parrots are back, but how did they get there? San Diego's beach neighborhoods have become an unexpected sanctuary for the red-crowned Amazon parrots. This species 
originally comes from northern Mexico. These colorful and very vocal loud birds oh, yes. have adapted to the beachside communities in Point Loma, Ocean Beach, San Diego, and Pacific Beach, where they're a common sight in the warmer months. So they have just returned. While their presence is still a bit of a puzzle, because they don't know exactly why they have come here, uh, theories suggest they might have arrived through the exotic pet trade in the 1940s. But today, these parrots are part of San Diego's coastal charm, with their squawks as familiar as the ocean waves. At last count, there were 800 parrots on the beaches of San Diego. That's a Mm -hmm. lot. And Phineas is like, teach them to swear. Yeah, because that's what you want. It's just a bunch of swearing birds More next to your restaurant. Birds. Exactly, yeah. exactly. They're beautiful. And, you know, for a lot of people pr- that don't know that head to the beach there and they're tourists, probably <laughs> unexpected. Like, ooh, parrots everywhere. It's right? got to be kind of cool, though, right? I mean, parrots are kind of a cool bird. They're loud, though. Very I don't know. Loud. I might be freaked out a little bit if one landed on my head. <laughs> but I'd be freaked out if any bird landed on my head. So I wonder how... In the clash between, you know, when you go to the beach and seagulls always try to get your food or they're yeah, always, you know, there's a, lur- a seagull them. that's always lurking. I wonder right. in the clash between the parrot and the seagull, which is uh, going win. to be more victorious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this report is sponsored by you, which it means is. we do count on you to help us crowdfund this Nikki Maduro show, which we love so much. Talking about everything from bridge collapses to trump to rfk jr to love Titties, island i love island exactly. you never know what's gonna happen on the nikki maduro show <laughs> find us at the nikki maduro show.com patreon paypal links are all up and ready to rock and roll i'm kim McAllister. this is the nikki maduro show thank you thank you kim and again please support our sponsor auntie tabby's island flavors she has a barbecue sauce and two hot sauces uh, barbecue sauce is not spicy, by the way. I want to let people know that might have been concerned about that. It's guava barbecue sauce. And so I like the sweet and the spicy. Here's a couple pictures. This is the hot sauce. One is hibiscus. The other is pineapple. And this is the guava barbecue sauce. Oh, it's not hot sauce. No, this is just the barbecue sauce. So there's a one barbecue sauce, oh. two hot sauces. And so you can buy you could buy um, kind of a box that has all three. You could buy just barbecue sauce. You could buy just hot sauce. But you get a 10%, 10% discount by using the code Nick Kim or Nikki M, N-I-K-K-I-M. It's on your screen. Just go to AuntieTabbies.com slash n-i-k-k-i-m and you'll get 10 percent off and some of the proceeds go to the show and some of them go to support uh organizations in jamaica that help kids out there and fight crime and all that sort or reduce crime and all that sort of stuff so please please support our first sponsor of the show Auntie Yay! Tabby's. Please love you. thank you thank you thank you and uh, a thank you also to doug who just came in with a five dollar super sticker so we appreciate you oh so very very much That's all so right nice yeah uh, speaking of money speaking of money uh let's talk about what we were kind of teasing during kim's news which is of course fast food workers specifically are going to get the twenty dollar per hour bump in minimum wage soon uh, this year in january California's minimum wage went up to $16 an hour. And I know some people here in California and beyond think that's way too high. It's like if you raise minimum wage too much, then it's going to cause inflation, cost of goods, cost of your Big Mac, right? That's what's always uh, thrown out there. But here's my question. If you don't raise wages, then how do people afford life here? What is the answer? I, I don't know what it is besides raising uh, wages. I just don't get it. Uh, now there was somebody who said, Sandy, if we never raise wages, there should be a, lo- a law that stops landlords from raising people's rent. I could afford to work for less if my rent was as low as it was in the nineties. Yeah, no duh. Um, Donald says, how about a universal income, which we also have had pilot programs with, right? But what was it? 500 bucks a month. That's not enough to pay rent. It could help. It could help pay the PG and E bill. It could help pay gas prices and things like that. But what are we supposed to do if we don't raise wages? Now, a lot of people like to, to make the, uh, the statement that minimum wage is supposed to just be a teenage wage, blah, blah, blah. But businesses uh, don't work school hours, right? All of these minimum wage businesses that are either 16 or if you're fast food, soon to be $20 an hour. What do they do when kids are in school, those teenagers that are supposed to be working there? They hire adults. Adults work there. Adults work there as, you know, all sorts of, in all sorts of positions. 
So it, it doesn't make sense unless we can do something about the cost of housing. Now I would say housing and wages are the two things that need to, that are completely out of whack in places like the Bay area. It just is. You can't, <laughs> Some, where was it? Somebody had mentioned, you know, uh, I don't, it, it's not fair that you could just charge $4,000 a month for an apartment because you're able to, right? Because that's just what the market will bear. That capitalistic idea in regards to housing doesn't work unless it coincides with wages because housing is a basic need. You know, the hierarchies of need, food and housing. That's what people need. And then everything else is on top of that. Vacation, brand new car, those aren't needed. You need to house people. You need to feed people. And so if we don't get this in order, then I don't understand how we're going to make this work. Now, if we don't, if we're like, well, no, I live in San Jose. I live in Los Gatos. I live, you know, in Montesoreno. I live in, you know, Marin. I want, you know, to have a certain level of person that has a certain level of income to be able to live here. Okay, fine. Where do you take your laundry? Where do you go get a, a quick bite to eat? I mean, are you willing to drive everywhere far, far, far away just to get that? Or do you want those amenities in your neighborhood? Most people will say, yes, I want to go to a gas station where there's somebody working behind the counter. I want, you know, to go to the Habit Burger. I want somebody working at the laundromat. I want somebody to work at that small business. I want those people. Okay. How much should those people make? Are they going to make a hundred thousand dollars a year to, to be, to have the privilege of living in your neighborhood? It's just, it doesn't make any sense. And I don't know, I don't know how to, I don't know how to fix it. If it's not raising wages, Lady Beatrice says, unless we find ways to lower the cost of living, the wage raises will have to be the solution. Exactly. OCB says you probably couldn't afford rent in Beverly Hills either. Now, I get what you're saying. We've had this conversation before. It's like, if you live, you know, in Manhattan, rents are high. Don't live in Manhattan. You have to commute in. There's only so, so much commuting you can do. Now, Beverly Hills is, is, is a small area in which there's cheaper housing really quite next to it. Okay. I'm talking about the entire freaking Bay Area, right? Like, where you can afford people making six figures can't even afford to rent an apartment uh, or, or pay off their bills sometimes. Calvin says, if it raises inflation, then why isn't there any complaints about multimillionaire wages? Can you spell inconsistency in economic policy? Of course, right? It's like, oh, if we give the, the lowly poor a, a raise in their minimum wage, that's theft or that's bad for business. But, you know, golden parachutes for people that like made a business go under. Nobody's pointing the finger at that. It, it's ridiculous. Sandy says it's almost seems as if people are threatened by the idea of other people doing well. Some people feel better about themselves knowing that other people are will always be poor and struggling. That's that's an interesting take. And I think that there might be a little bit of truth to that. Mm. I mean, <sighs> minimum wage, 20 bucks an hour. You call that doing well? No, it's not. I'm Eric, just saying, explain, like in yeah. the Bay Area, that's no, that's nothing. That's you cannot live on twenty dollars an hour. and clawing to survive, right? That's poverty. You yeah. will be living in your car, mm. living in your car if the yeah. only income you have is twenty dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah. Eric says you can't expect someone to work full time and not pay them a wage they can live on. Mm. I love that you said that, Eric. I've had this argument with the business owners in my life, and like, so you're telling me that I should pay X, Y, and Z to this person that lets works on, works on my business. And I go, well, let me first ask you, is the person full time? And they go, yes. And I go, then yes, you have to pay them a living wage because when are they supposed to live? Are they supposed to work eight hours for you? And then another eight hours for somebody else <clears throat> just to be able to afford a roof over their head. If you yes, can't that's afford what you want people to do, if you mm -hmm. can't afford to pay somebody a wage in which they can live relatively close to their place of employment, your business model does not work and you can't afford employees. Yeah. You do the work then. You do the work, make your business successful enough until you can hire employees unless you want to be a slave owner. That's just the truth. If you want to hire people, you have to pay them enough to be able to live where your business is. It There's just seems to make sense to me.
I haven't gone there in a while because I'm drinking my Coachella Valley Coffee Company tea that I'm okay. making at home. But it used to be that I would swing by Wendy's on the way to school pickup and get an iced right. tea. Unsweetened iced tea is like my little treat to myself. Okay. And uh, they're not cheap, by the way. They've gone up in price and whatever. But I would talk to the guy who got to be very chatty. He would recognize me. Right. And he, I would say, how you doing? And he said, well, I'm really tired. And I said, oh, how come? And he would say, well, because after my shift here at Wendy's, I have to drive to Roner Park and I have a job at a gas station where I'm a clerk at the gas station until and there would be like, because he would get off of his his job at Wendy's sometime in the afternoon, evening. Right. Right. And then he would go work the, the late, the swing shift at the gas station. By the time he got home, he didn't get to see his three kids that he has. Right. And then he gets back up and starts the whole day back at his shift at Wendy's again. Yeah. It's like people trying to do two, three jobs, just trying to stay in the Bay Area. Yeah. And you wonder, well, why? What kind of quality of life is that for people? Yeah. Um, and again, it's, and then we won't go where are the parents when the kids get into trouble, right? Then mm -hmm. we're like, oh, but we don't want to pay for after school programs. Why should we have to pay for that? Don't our, you know what I mean? Like, it's as if we just don't yeah. want to take care of each other enough. Um, Natalie or says this, oh, God. Uh, no, I was just going to say, or why Why am I the only, does it seem like, you know, the same people volunteer at school every single time? Well, it's because yeah. some parents have two or three jobs they're trying to exactly, pull down. Exactly, exactly. Anyway. Natalie says the law is not equitable. Small food businesses will have a hard time competing for workers who will make more at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder what the rules are on considering to be fast food. Do we know what that is? I know the whole Panera bread thing was yeah. all wrapped into that. If you don't make your own bread, blah, blah, blah. But I'm wondering, like, if you serve food in a quick way... And you're not a restaurant, right? Um, I don't know. Heather says, I, I'm sure it's a cascade effect, too. Some landlords probably raise rents only because their own bills are also increasing and they can't keep up. S rolls downhill. I'm sure that's true for some people. I'm also true. I, I, I am positive that some people need to do it because that's what they do for a living, right? They're a landlord. They own multiple properties. And that is a viable legal business, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm also sure there's some people that are just freaking greedy pans down they're just like i can raise the rent so i'm gonna raise the rent i and 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 there's nothing that's changed too much in their income i'm sure it's both you know and i don't know what's more than the other but and again and ron i'm not saying that he says it's not the property owner's fault they're offering a service that meets a need true you don't have to live in the bay area true the part of the equation that is not working are the wages true now, I'm not saying it's the property owner's fault. I do think that there are some, and this is could be corporations, right? They do these evictions, they they slap some paint on the wall, they double the rent. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's there there there's all different sorts of situations. I particularly like the mom and pop landlords. You know, they might have one or two homes, they live in one, they rent out one. Those people seem to be, you know, those that will work with the community. These large corporations that buy up single family homes, not just apartment units, and kind of kick people out, slap on the paint and raise the rate, uh, rents, I do think are a problem in some cases. I do. It just, it, it really, I don't know. It, it makes me scared that we can't see eye to eye on this because then I don't know how we solve the problem. I really mm -hmm. don't see how you can without raising wages, have a diverse community I, without, you know, doing something about this. Yeah. And it's is it true. a problem that the, the fast food prices are going up? If it's what you always eat, yes. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, if, if a Big Mac costs more, it costs more anyway, right? It costs more across the board. And, 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 and wages have stayed stagnant across the country. So let's stop pointing to it as the only barometer, okay? Or maybe if fast food prices go up, fewer people will buy fast food, right? Because mm -hmm. it's too expensive now, which means they'll need fewer workers, but the workers they have will be making right. a better wage. I don't right. know. Now, Ron, this mentality doesn't work because of what I said when I started this topic. We want people at different skill sets and different job sectors. That's what makes up a community, right? Mm -hmm. Ron writes, he should move to a lower cost area and improve his skill set. Hard truth. You can't afford it here. If you want a diverse community that has all different types of businesses that handle so many different things that people like, right? 
gas station attendants, nail salons, restaurants, mm-hmm. all these sorts of places. If that's how you like your society to be, then you need to have different, you know, skill sets and job sectors. Those should come with a base pay that allows people to live relatively close. I'm not saying you have to live in Beverly Hills. I'm not saying you have to live on Saks Fifth Avenue. But what I am saying <laughs> is that it needs to be reasonable. People yeah. should not have to travel very far for a minimum wage job that's not helping to make ends meet. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Um, Vilma says, my tenants paid their rent during the pandemic and we did not raise the rent since 2019. This year we had to raise the rent. We had no choice. Okay, and I hope it was reasonable. And I think that's fair. Since 2019, Mm -hmm. you didn't raise the rent? That's fine. I'm really good friends with a mom. Single mom, right? I mean, she raises half the time with her ex. But, you know, she makes decent money. And she just can't find a place that has a little bit extra room, right? And every single year, the apartment complex that she lives in has raised the rent. And she's not getting a wage increase. Where's that money coming from? It's coming from, you know, the everyday items that she needs. It's and pretty soon she's just going to be completely priced out. And it sucks. No, I'm you know, I'm, I was at I had the birthday party over the weekend. I, I might have mentioned. Yeah. And one of the kids that came was brought by his sister because the mom was working. And she was telling me that they have to find a new place to live because their lease is up in a month. They have a month to find a new home that and that they're trying really hard to stay in Petaluma, but everything they find is way too much money. Yeah. And finding something is really difficult. They started this business right before the pandemic. It was an alterations and dress business, like it was selling oh, nice. dresses. Right. And then the pandemic hit, right? And the business is closed down. And so now they're, you know, struggling to kind of figure out if they can even keep the business open they're having to move there's a lot of people that are hurting out there like that yeah you know exactly and it sucks and and we need to take care because again we want our community there's a lot Mm -hmm. of good people out there there really are Mm -hmm. uh there was this other story regarding lake tahoe uh so lake tahoe also is having this huge problem where a bunch of people moved there especially during the pandemic people from the bay area with a lot of money snatched up their homes you want to talk about an area where you could see it kind of in a condensed form. We got ski resort uh, workers, all those sorts of workers. They got to travel hell of a long distance, right? To get to Tahoe every day to work the slopes for people that can afford it Mm -hmm. just because they love it. So, and they have a housing shortage because again, people snatched up the homes and they're not able to afford it. There was, um, so the price of housing has jumped about 90%. No, this is the wrong headline. So there is a new uh, project, 248 units. It's called Sugar Sugar Pine Village, right? Sounds like a nice name. Right. And so they're trying to build all of these hundreds of units. But you know how they're doing it to save money? They're not building in Tahoe. They're building because, okay, so think about it. In Tahoe, the building season is very short because the sun comes or the snow comes in and all those sorts of things. So what they're doing is they are building the homes in the Bay Area and then driving them plastic wrapped up to South Lake Tahoe. They hang the drywall, install the windows in the first phase of of the development so that it's it's ready to go with a roof and everything like that. Because if you don't have a roof, you don't have a roof. But look, look at this between 2012 and 2021 median home prices in the Lake Tahoe basin jumped from $345,000 to $950,000. You think wages even came close to that? No. The rents landlords are keeping it, you know, in line. No, they're not. And, but people like to go to Lake Tahoe. They like someone helping them on and off the, 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 the ski lift. They like to have somebody at the bar cozying up with their hot toddy after a long day on the slopes. How much do you pay those people? That matters. So, yeah, I just, I wanted to throw that in there because I think that's a genius way of thinking outside the box. They're like, we have to be able to build during more parts of the year affordable housing units. And that's what they're doing now. Is it going to change the aesthetic of South Lake Tahoe? Probably. Mm-hmm. You're going to have a lot more homes, a lot more apartment units. I'd much rather have that and keep the businesses alive, keep people that love Lake Tahoe in the area than to see it go away. And it's just a bunch of mansions surrounding the lake with nobody working all those restaurants or anything like that. So we just no. got to, 
we got to keep our priorities. Um, mm. I know I've been on a bit of a soapbox about this, but we have to build. I know people don't like it, but we have to build people. We have to build more housing. We just do. Um, Sandy says that's pretty much how capitalism works. A certain percentage of the population has to remain dirt poor in order for a certain percentage to remain filthy rich. That's depressing. That's absolutely depressing. All right. Um, okay. Let's do some more headlines. And then we're going to talk about another kind of change in business. And that's within the wine industry. There was a story not too long ago about a bunch of vineyards in Napa that are pulling up their grapes, right? Uh, but there could be another problem in store for not just the wine industry, but the alcohol industry in general. Hmm. And that's because millennials might be a little bit of a teetotaler kind of shunning the alcohol really yeah so we'll look at some of the statistics around that and are you seeing that you know in your kind of circle where people loving the mocktails there's a bar in sacramento there's a bunch of bars opening up mm -hmm. they don't serve alcohol they're serving mocktails now yeah. we can talk about the price of those mocktails but um i'm just saying if if there is a significant shift in how people consume or if they even do consume alcohol what does that do to the industry? And are they going to be able to pivot quick enough? All right, let's take a look at some headlines first, though, with Kim. Now, from around the world to up your street, the Nikki Maduro Show presents new czar Kim McAllister. Well, we will begin with the search. It continues for missing people after this Baltimore bridge collapsed overnight when a container ship slammed right into it. There you have the picture of what happened uh, in this area of Baltimore. Officials say at least six construction workers who were on the Francis Scott Key Bridge when it plunged into the river remain unaccounted for. They did rescue two people overnight. One of them remains in the hospital. There no word, there is no word on the conditions of anyone else who may have been on the bridge at the time of the collapse. A scary situation. Meanwhile, President Biden says the federal government will pay for the reconstruction of the Francis Sc Scott Key Bridge that collapsed when this cargo ship you can see here slammed into it overnight. In remarks from the White House, President Biden said the incident appears to be a terrible accident, adding that there is no reason to believe that was, it was an intentional act at this time. Mm. The Supreme Court, as we mentioned earlier, is hearing arguments on this Mifepristone case. It's a little picture of the box of Mifepristone as we do this story. What they say is uh, that justices are reviewing an appeals court decision that blocked a recent FDA change making this medication more widely available. Solicitor General Elizabeth Prologar arguing on behalf of the Biden administration claiming this ruling would inflict grave harm on women across the nation. Apple is facing three new consumer lawsuits that claim it is monopolizing the smartphone market. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I only now have a an Apple phone, but I and and it is because it's easier because the rest of my family had one. But I was very happy with my Samsung or my Google Pixel. So right, and it was cheaper, know. right? It was less expensive to buy, but you know, you still have to pay the for the service and everything else. I yeah. don't know. But the class actions were filed by Android users in California and in New Jersey. The claims allege that Apple keeps certain essential apps, services, and hardware exclusive to the iPhone, making it a monopoly by eliminating competition with Android smartphones. Mm. <clears throat> I also heard the argument that you're somehow seen as less than if you're text that you send shows up like in a green. different color yeah. yeah it was a green text like oh you're not an apple user something Ooh, happened with my down. phone one time and like my mm. and i have an apple but it started showing up i don't notice these things like i could give a rat's butt right mm -hmm. but like one of my friends was like why are your texts showing up green and i was like oh i don't know what's wrong with my phone uh they're like do you have an uh, like an android and i was like no why do you care like it's like did you get my text okay then done that's all that not that's all that matters it's crazy are, they, are you were you being judged oh <laughs> i was and i was like i don't know i still have an apple i swear i swear back to fast food for just a moment because apparently there's a new partnership that is coming uh soon to a mcdonald's near you because 
If your I Big know, Mac wasn't this. enough fattening food for nope. you, well, throw in a few Krispy Kreme donuts while you're at it, and there you have a heart attack on a plate. Mm. McDonald's and Krispy Kreme announcing a partnership beginning later this year. Fans will begin spotting Krispy Kreme donuts at some McDonald's restaurants across the country as part of a new rollout that will eventually lead to Krispy Kreme donuts being made available nationwide at McDonald's by the end of 2026. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a genius partnership. Shares, oh, yeah. uh, shares of McDonald's and I think Krispy Kreme were up on the news this morning. I mean, come on. I don't, again, I don't like breakfast at fast foods, let alone mm-hmm. going to McDonald's for any of it. I'm not much of a donut, let alone a Krispy Kreme donut eater. But if I was going to get a cup of coffee and was in the mood for a donut and I could just go to McDonald's and get both, done. Mm-hmm. Genius. Might as well do it. It's kind of like Starbucks with, um, and I'm going to butcher it, Le Boulangerie or whatever. They teamed up with them. Uh, La to Petite Boulangerie. The cur- yeah, there you go. That's exactly mm, how I said no, it. No. Um, yeah, they're a the bomb. I love it. It's delicious. So that was a great partnership. Did it pop? What do we have here? It did not pop. It did not but pop. But gonna look at it swell. Look at it rise. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the Powerball was last night, right? And so nobody pa- got it? The Powerball was last night. It did not. It was not uh, when uh, their n- all numbers were not selected. Oh, that wow. means it rises to eight hundred and sixty-five million. But tonight, wow. it's the Mega Millions jackpot, and that is worth what do we have now? One point one three billion. This is the lottery, so it's a. I'll take that. Fresh information, one point one three. Oh, the one point one three billion dollar jackpot comes with a cash option of more than five hundred thirty seven million dollars. Now you get the five thirty seven mil, and you still have to pay then taxes on that, right? Right. So you're not getting five thirty seven. You're getting maybe I'm going to say ish for I mean three eighty something maybe. I'll take it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's totally right. fine. Totally but fine. That's a lot different than 1.13 billion, right? This is very misleading. I do not care. Uh-huh. I'll take a million. I'll take a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not looking to give horse in the mouth here, but it can you adjust? I mean, I didn't buy a ticket again like yesterday, but like, oh my God, if you won that, mm-hmm. I just. It's crazy to think about that. Life. Janet and I were talking about this last night at dinner. It's like we hope somebody wins it that will do you know good things with it that deserves it. Like somebody that a good person wins it, right? Not. Uh, I don't know. It'll make. I would hope that even if you weren't a good person, it'll make you a good person. I hope you'll be generous. I hope you won't, you know, hoard it or anything like that. I don't know, man. That's a lot of money. Yeah, give it a little away, right? I mean, if you have that much, then share. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the the cash option for the 1.13 bill comes just to over $537 million. The yeah. Powerball jackpot, as we mentioned, also rolling over. No grand prize winner last night. So the next time to strike it rich then will be Wednesday with an estimated $865 million up for grabs in the Powerball. And yeah. nobody won the Super Lotto either. So that one's at $21 million now. Yeah. Jeez, I mean, it's it, you want to play, but you like then there's part of me like it's such a long shot. But somebody oh. wins. It's like whatever big number and one, and I'm like, and that one mm-hmm. happens. It happens eventually. Somebody it happens. Is winning. Exactly. It's a, it's a ridiculous. The odds are ridiculous. I mean, you know what is it? There, there's never gonna, to we have a better chance of having something hideous happen to us. Yeah, being struck by lightning twice, right. they say. But people have been struck by lightning twice. And yeah. people have won huge jackpots. So, you know. So you're not jackpot. buying you're not buying that, you know, you're buying the chance. You're buying the dream. And that's yeah. probably all you're gonna end up with. So that's what I it do. Is. I really, yeah. really, really do like yeah. the dream when I do end up buying a ticket. I know. I hear you. Can you even imagine? Uh, no, I can't. You know they why the the jackpots are this big, is because they made it harder to win, and so that's why you have. How is it harder to win? They just added more numbers. I I forget exactly what they did, but they made I maybe it was more numbers or maybe it was different numbers that the Mega Million or the Powerball. Um, but yeah, you can't um, you can't win if you don't play. That's Mr. Exactly. Getting, this is, that's exactly. what, that's my motto, my friend. That's mine too. <clears throat> yeah, but no, they made it harder to win. So then you have these jackpots that are 
you know, rising and not not popping as often. And so then you get these massive jackpots and then more people come out and play. So it's kind of a racket the way they do it. Eric's like, it's a tax on people who can't do math. Wow, mm -hmm. I'm being a negative Nelly today. It's okay. We're all in the mood. Look, we still I love will you, say Eric. This, it's okay. As long as you're not blowing like hundreds of dollars yeah. that you don't, buying a couple tickets and yeah. being able to daydream, it's mm -hmm. just fun. But you can't do it all of the time. I know people right. that like, oh my God. And it's just like, okay, like, uh, don't waste too much of your money. It is no. really a long shot, but um... yeah, there will be people who will go out and spend hundreds of dollars on tickets, right? Yeah. Which is ridiculous because I think, you know, that it doesn't, you, you can buy a $2 ticket and I mean, you have as much chance. Yeah. yeah. That's why they're like, do you want to choose your numbers or um, do a, a quick pick? I'm like, do a quick pick. It's, yeah. it's like, it's, I don't know Although, if it's really. You always hear the people that win or they're I like, play oh, I the played my kid's number. birthdays or I played my, sure. you know, I have my special so numbers that I play. Yeah. I Every know. time I get there, though, I don't want to fill out the fill bubble thing. That's why I don't mm -hmm. do it. It's laziness. It's pure laziness. But I'm trying to stretch out the story because I just like looking at all those big numbers on the screen. I will say that. Okay, what is this? What? Is, here's a question for you. You know how there are, there's that meme? It's like, I won't tell anybody I won the lottery, but there will be signs. What would be your sign if you didn't oh. tell anybody? No, no, no. You'll all know. There will be daily giveaways on every show. I'll be <laughs> like, today's prize is $10,000. <laughs> Answer well, somebody... the trivia question to win. Like, no, there will be there there will be full on cash giveaways. Hundred well, percent. So I would adopt every single dog in the pound in my city. Like those sorts of things, right? Yeah. Like I'm gonna buy everybody a Krispy Kreme donut and a cup of coffee from McDonald's. Something like that. Like there's gonna be a sign. Like you'll know. The I'll people... buy a Taco Bell. Or something. The people that I know are struggling. <laughs> yeah. Like I just mentioned the the yeah. boy that came to the party. Like. Those are the people that are struggling yeah. to find housing, to worried that they're going to have to pull their kid out of school and all these things and move to some other community where that's more affordable. Those are the people that you maybe you don't know in your everyday life, but when you right. find them and you know they need help, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to be able to yeah. do something for them? You know, Donald, you're speaking my language. Why, when I buy a compound for the whole family to hang out, I would love yeah. that idea. Yep. Um, I also want to be like a Mackenzie Bezos, although like totally, you know, like just empty the coffers, baby. Like who yep. needs money? You know, write yes. me, tell me what you need it for. I want to be, but I also mm -hmm. want to be one of those anonymous people that like donate to like an arts program at some yeah. inner city school. Like, oh my God, we can put the Imagine play on. every PTA in Petaluma gets $100,000. You know what Fund I mean? Fund yourself yeah. for the year. Don't worry about having the auction. Just go get exactly. it. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. Cameo's yeah. like, you get a car and you get a car. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. You know, Today buy, on the I, Nikki Maduro show, we're giving a brand new speedboat all, away. Yeah, all yeah. of these mini homes yeah. and, you know, just all these things that could just help right. society. That's what I would yeah. want to do. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Oh, that'd be good. Thank you. Well, daydreaming. Got to buy the ticket dream, first. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was our little moment. We haven't even bought the ticket and we're already doing the daydream. We'll need to buy. Well, my daughter has tutoring today. And so the tutoring is near a liquor store. So I might remember, but then I always forget. So we'll see. We'll I'm see texting you to remind you. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And then I expect a big old raise. That's <laughs> exactly. what I want. Oh, believe me. If I, yeah, there will be signs, Kim. There will there be will signs. Be, in there will be signs when we're <laughs> blinged out. No. Exactly. You You're looking really in. sparkly today. I mean, think oh, about did that. Did you, you have, have a new background made of gold? Yes. You have 500 million, over yeah. 500 million dollars. I mean, yeah. come on. You better be generous. My God. All of a sudden, Friday foods are being door dashed all the time. <laughs> yeah, I can afford the door dash again. There you go. That's funny. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, as we dream, this report is sponsored by For you. now. It's sponsored For now. by you. There you Which go. Which means that we do rely on you to help us fund the Nikki Maduro show. But someday the tables might turn and we might oh. be funding you. Uh, so please find us at thenickymadoroshow.com. Thenickymadoroshow.com is where the Patreon link and the PayPal link lives and all the things that help keep this show rocking and rolling here on YouTube and podcast as well. Yep. I'm you. Kim McAllister. And this is The Nicky Maduro Show. And thank you to Doug with the $5 super sticker. And Sam came in with a $10 donation. He says tax billionaires and no tax for low income workers. Yeah. Cheers. Done. Done. I love that idea. Yeah. You know, go where the money is, mm -hmm. you know, with the billionaires out there. Uh, but again, uh, thank you to all of our supporters. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit, though. Sam said cheers. So let's cheers. 
to kind of a changing in drinking habits among the younger generation. I'm going to show you this. This TikToker had put out um, a video. She was ex about basically the changing drinking habits. She was expecting maybe a couple hundred people to respond. It's like, what was the number? 34,000 and counting. Here is the video with her talking and asking what's happening with drinking among the younger generation. I don't know if anyone cares about this, but the wine industry is quite literally on fire right now because consumption is down as a whole around the world, specifically in like millennial and Gen Z. I have a question for y'all. Gen X can play too if you want. But if you're choosing to not drink wine, either like ever or in certain situations, why is that? And there's no right or wrong answer here. Like as a millennial and a psalm, there are many times I choose to not drink wine, but I'm curious if it's like, you know, convenience, price, um, accessibility, confusion, whatever. So she asked hmm. that. And a lot of people, a lot of the answers were kind of interesting and they were pointing to the younger generations viewing alcohol. This was 20% of the people as toxic poison or the 2024 cigarette. One comment that received 400 oh. likes said, there's just a growing knowledge and cultural consensus in younger generations about the negative effects of alcohol. It's less weird to not drink. No, so remember like if you knew someone that was getting sober, okay? And so they go out to, with their friends mm. and they get the club soda with lime. That's like the stereotypical drink, right? And they're like, oh, I don't drink. And everyone's just like kind of awkward about it. Now it's just Ooh, like, oh. they must have a problem. A problem right? I just don't And drink. now it's like, who cares if you don't want to drink, right? Right. Do you want to try the latest mocktail, which somebody was asking right. earlier? It's a drink with no alcohol. It's all the fancy yeah. juices and sodas and stuff like that, but it has no booze in it. And so if, mm. if they're getting fun and there's an entire business with this, but here's my question. What is the wine and alcohol industry going to do now can you take the booze out of wine and not call it grape juice you know what i mean like mm, how no. do you no survive? i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> how do you survive but it doesn't mean i mean i don't have wine every night i don't drink like that i mean most I of the time it, i'm yeah. ordering an iced tea like it's you know and no one cares if you're drinking anymore you could always tell the older gen x uh boomer generations Je heather's like gen x and you could pry the wine bottle from my cold head, dead hands uh tumbleweed nobody likes a quitter these are <laughs> jokes of course um yeah. somebody else was mentioning you know obviously if alcoholism runs in your family ellen due to alcoholism in my irish family we do not drink alcoholism mm -hmm. period when kim and nikki linger on talking about their drinks i go elsewhere hands well, down we're talking to you. about not drinking today ellen exactly. so hopefully that's okay um, for you doug's and like I, yeah. yeah pick me up a few drinks on the way pigs oh pick me that was i thought that <clears> but was drinks. don't you think ellen i mean it, that's she may not have a problem but she may have people in her family that have struggled right. and so maybe she makes the choice listen i know i have a family history of this i choose just not to partake great yeah, that makes perfect sense to me, too. But I, I don't think of alcohol, and maybe it's a skewed perspective. Mm. But I don't think of it as the same way I think of cigarettes. When I look Ooh, at a cigarette, you should. You should. I look at a cigarette. And I think, why would you bother, you know, putting, putting that, that toxic in your body? Into, your, into your lungs? That's like, alcohol. why would you? How stupid can you be? Right? Meanwhile, <laughs> You got a vineyard we, in your front yard. <laughs> we've seen exactly. Well, we've seen studies that show that any amount of alcohol is bad for you. So right now, I'm not giving up my alcohol, but I did give it up during the week. Mm -hmm. Gil says so many neighborhood bars have closed. Today's yeah. generation drinks way less booze, and I think that's a good thing. I was mm -hmm. just talking about my crap TV show where they don't give them any booze. Now, obviously, that's to kind of limit the risk and behavior. But yeah. I think that goes uh, hand in hand with it. People mm -hmm. see what alcohol does, drunk driving accidents, yep. sexual assaults, you know, uh, fights, bad behavior, all these sorts of things can be directly tied to drinking too mm -hmm. much. Child abuse, child abandonment, you know, all those sorts of health issues, health insurance costs. Well, um, here's the question. If, right. al if alcohol is the new cigarette, where it's on the decline and people right. aren't drinking anymore. Does that mean that marijuana or edibles or all of these things are the new alcohol? Well, I think that people view them a little bit differently. Again, I would say that if you're ingesting mm -hmm. anything that's of um, 
of a, of a different sus- substance that your body doesn't naturally make, right? So THC, THC alcohol, mm-hmm. those sorts of things. I think you have to weigh the risks. Uh, I would probably guess anecdotally. Um, so on this study or whatever, they said the decriminalization and legalization of weed and THC products was an overwhelmingly popular response because you can get the buzz without the hangover. Mm -hmm. And some people are like, you know what? I don't have a problem with booze. I just don't want to deal with the crap the next day. And as you get older, you can't drink as much without it making you feel like crap the next day. So Mm -hmm. I could see that happening. Um, Heather also says, I think the cult bar culture itself has reduced a lot in the last decade or so. Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe my neighborhood bar just doesn't. I, I, the neighborhood bar I go to seems to be doing just fine. And I do happen to see a lot of younger generation people going there. Um, I'm encouraged by it, though. I think it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. So the number one so on the list was the THC, like I mentioned. Headaches and hangovers were 30% of the responses. Um you know, another reason why one person said I urge the need for uh, ingredient transparency is because of wine headaches and hangovers and things like that. Health reasons was 20% of the responses. Many refer to alcohol as a poison because it's not supposed to be in your body. Alcoholism, negative interactions with medications, allergic reactions to wine. I get this. If I drink Mm -hmm. too much wine, my face flushes. I get that flushed face all the time. And that's can be embarrassing. Uh, some people see it as unhealthy. And then, of course, societal and social concerns and generational changes. But is the alcohol industry too big to fail? I mean, can they pivot? I could see, you know, from a White Claws, right? Malt, malts, drinks. Mm-hmm. People are like thinking it's wine. It's really like a malt beverage or whatever. Yeah. Uh, people also put THC into beverages yeah. instead, you know, and all those sorts of things. I just... I like the the trend towards less drinking because I feel like it's going to lead to less drinking and driving. Um, and I, I, I encourage people to limit the amount of alcohol that they drink. I still like to drink my booze. Don't get me wrong, but mm. you got to kind of keep it in, 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 in kind of it's appropriate. Uh, RJ level. with an excellent point. He says alcohol is just as toxic as cigarettes. Both are class one carcinogens. Guess which ones destroy mm. lives and families along the way. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I get, you know, I get it. It's yeah. it's it's awful. Uh, if you have anyone in your family that's an alcoholic, mm-hmm. if you're an alcoholic or a recovering alcoholic, one of my friends that I've known for years is uh, has gotten sober. Mm-hmm. And she's, you know, a huge, she's promoting it on social media. She's really sharing her story, which I have the utmost respect for because mm-hmm. it's hard when you hear some of these stories, even people that you knew and you don't even realize mm-hmm. how much they were drinking. Like I was drinking yeah. a handle a day. Like what? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, Lee says alcohol is poison. Numbs the pain of living, but people become dependent on it. People are better off without it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really it can really destroy your life very quickly. Uh, Donald says now studies are showing cannabis products have a negative impact too. (laughs) Again, anything that kind of alters your body is going to have some sort of impact. Is it the same? And can you imbibe or ingest, I guess I should say THC, whether it's in an edible form or smoke form at the same level as alcohol? I kind of feel like, and again, this is just, back to the stoner years, right? Once mm. you're stoned, you're stoned. Like I feel like people over drink alcohol because they forget how much they're drinking. And then yeah. what you were talking about, Kim, roofing and all those sorts of things, mm. all the other hazards that can come with alcohol. There's something that we romanticize alcohol as well. Oh, like, yeah. oh, go to the winery and, mm-hmm. you know, walk through the vineyards and it's beautiful. And I live here in the wine country. That's something we celebrate. I've got some yeah. Pinot Noir vines on the other side of this wall, right? Exactly. So we, ro- but we romanticize that. And now I, if those were pot plants, would you still be bragging about it? it no, right? And it's or, legal. You could. Uh, or if I'm growing tobacco outside, I'm hoping right. the neighbors don't see, like, what is she doing over there? Right. So I don't know. I just feel like the way society embraces certain things and the way we accept it and welcome it 
is different, different depending on what it is. And even though we know that alcohol isn't good for us, we just still have this romantic vision of it. And it's not just wine. It's all it can also be, you know, the the casks of whiskey, yeah. right? You go yeah. to Scotland and see how they they make the whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, My husband yeah. has so much bourbon because he's yeah. part of a bourbon club. Nobody's, yeah. you know, but of course, ask him to drink it it's we're storing it apparently yeah. um but yeah it's just it's it's seen and it's advertising it's yeah. history it's how this country was founded mm -hmm. it's prohibition and the pushback on that it's just the years and years of years of it being ingrained that once you turn 21 we're gonna go celebrate and you're gonna go drink and all those mm -hmm. sorts of things it's it is so ingrained in who we can be that to kind of shun it makes people be like what you don't drink at all? Mm -hmm. Like, no, I don't drink at all. So not me. I drink. Ren says that. it would be fun to have mocktail tastings, like wine tasting, but driving from beautiful place to beautiful place, no alcohol involved. And she says she'd go. So. And that sounds weird to me. Like to me, yeah. and I'm going to be completely honest, sounds like a waste of money and time. Really? I don't know why. It, I mean, I would I would go on a road trip with you, but for you to look at me and say, we're going to pay X, Y, and Z to go on mm -hmm. a mocktail tour versus like a bourbon tour or a wine tour or something like that i'd be like mm, i could drink because juice it's at not home. about getting loaded it's about the taste of the drink which right. doesn't have to have booze in it to taste good right no but what i'm saying is like it's also the cost factor like i can go i can stay home and drink club soda and juices till the cows come home why right. do i need to go I don't, that, and that's that's me same showing thing though how why influenced. do you need to go drink drink at you know booze at a bar you could also drink that at home true but then it, yeah. yeah i get it it's so yeah. weird right when you talk about this sort of thing Lauren says, I gave up drinking four years ago during COVID. Didn't mean that, but it was the best decision I ever made. Don't miss That's it awesome. at all. That's awesome. Uh, read about the growth of athletic brewing. Non-alcoholic beers. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, NA yeah. beers are growing in popularity. I just saw, mm -hmm. was it a Heineken one or Bex? I don't know. It was one of these commercials where the guy was always the designated driver. Mm -hmm. And they, he was drinking occasionally a non-alcoholic beer. And before you put it in the comments, I know that there is a sliver of alcohol in non-alcoholic beer just because of the fermentation. But let's put, let's you'd have to drink a lot to mm -hmm. get under the influence. But yeah, it's um, I'm not about, giving up my booze, but I would no. definitely come back. Talking about the difference though between alcohol and marijuana, Pot. yeah, you know it's both. It's detrimental. I, I oh, there was this on. one woman who. Gosh, she was a nice mom, but she you would always see her at the at the Irish pub downtown. Yeah. And people were nervous because she would drive on field trips and she was oh, clearly had a problem. No. Right? And so there's always like somebody that maybe is a little like, oh, you now naked mittens that. says good great name. Says yeah. I grew up with a mother who was a hundred percent always high on pot. It wasn't harmless. Yeah, it's right? not harmless. No. Mm -mm. I mean, I know I, I, I grew up, you know, with friends, parents that drank all of the time, like woke up, cracked the beer type of thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and you, you know, yeah. you wouldn't want to get in the car with that type of person. But at the same time, it's yeah, it's a habit that mm -hmm. it can be really bad and it could go bad pretty, pretty quickly. So ooh, am I going to pay the same amount um, at a bar for a drink for a mocktail? I don't want to, but I could see it happening. Maybe you're celebrating the fact that it doesn't have booze in it. Sure. Again, it's a mentality I'd have to get through. I'm just being honest. It's, We're working it's, on it's, it. It, we have to work on that kind yeah. of thing, you know, but I'm not knocking it and I'm happy to see it. So, all right. Good conversation, you guys. Uh, Joanne says somebody shouldn't tell you it's a mock party and you'd be surprised how much you enjoy the drinks. It'd be funny if people acted drunk, though, too, oh, right? Totally. Because ah! sometimes it's all in the mind, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm going to be in San Francisco tomorrow. Kim, though, will be here. I will be yeah. back on Thursday. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. Yeah. Doug with that $5 super sticker. Sam with a $10 super sticker as well. And now there is a delicious way to help support the Nikki Maduro show. You can get your hands on some delicious, not spicy barbecue sauce and two different hot sauces from Auntie Tabby's. Go to AuntieTabby's.com slash Nick Kim, N-I-K-K-I-M or Nikki M. <laughs> uh, and you can get a 10% discount on every order you ever make. Uh, so it's not just the first order. It's any order that you have. Here's a few of the bottles. 
There's the hot sauce, the hibiscus, and the pineapple. And there's the guava barbecue sauce that is not order that. spicy. It I'm is so it. yummy. Mm-hmm. And if you want a little bit of a kick, add the hot sauce. I did the pineapple hot sauce no. with the barbecue sauce on my chicken last night. No. Mwah! No. Chef's freaking kiss. So, um, but I'm going for the barbecue guava barbecue sauce. I can oh, get behind. It's so and good. So is this link? Will that get me a 10 percent off discount just for being a Nikki Maduro show? Yeah, listener, viewer, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So okay. you just go there. You just use the code. You can go to antitabbies.com and just remember the Nikki M or Nick Kim code mm-hmm. and just put it in at checkout, and you can support the show. We get a, a portion. They also support programs in Jamaica where Auntie Tabby is from. And uh, it, it goes to the skate park that helps keep kids off the streets and uh, from a life of crime, as they say. So cool. go support them. We really do appreciate it. Again, go to the Nikki Maduro show.com. Our Patreon link is there as well. Uh, PayPal, just send uh, the money to the Nikki Maduro show at gmail.com. And we will see you. Kim, we'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you yep, Thursday. I'll be here. Love you guys. <laughs> bye bye. Have a good. Nikki, you're all so awesome. You sprout like a beautiful blossom. You're all so the best. I really can't rest. You're all so awesome. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs>